Hey everyone, welcome back to Vic's Garage. I finally got this compressor hooked up. It's been sitting in here for a long time. I picked it up used late last year and it's been sitting because I didn't have power for it in the garage. I finally got my fuse panel upgraded and I had a sub panel put in the garage where I can get power for this thing. And I've wired it up and it works, which is kind of a relief because when you buy something and don't test it and it sits there for a while, you start to wonder. But it seems to work good. But I was thinking, I don't know if this guy before me did any maintenance on this whatsoever. And given that it's an older model of a uh, Campbell Hossfeld, I figured why not do a video on how to maintain your air compressor. So I'm gonna show you all the basics of doing the maintenance on your air compressor in this video. So let's get started. So first thing I'm gonna do while maintaining this air compressor is I'm gonna remove the cover. All right. so. I'm going to do an oil change on this, but the filler valve or the filler tubes on the other side and it'd just be easier to access the cover. Plus it'll allow me to check uh, some of the other stuff like belts and whatnot. So we're going to start by taking this cover off on every air compressor could be different. I can't find the instruction manual for this because it's an older one. So I've just kind of looked at it and I figured a lot of these things out as I've, I've gone and I've kind of used um, average information that I've found on most other air compressors. So let's get started on this one. There we go, loosen that. So we get the cover off here. Now you can see right over here is where you fill the oil up. The belts are on the cover on the other side. We'll get to that when we get to checking the belts. So I'm gonna work on changing the oil now. Okay, so the next thing we need to do to drain the oil now is I ran the compressor for a bit and uh, just to warm it up, just like a car, get the oil a little warm. Gave it a few minutes to drain back down. So this, this uh, plug here is the drain hole. Now obviously, given its position, if I just open that, it's gonna leak all over the compressor. So what I did is I just took a piece of junk mail and I'm gonna make a little funnel here. And then hopefully, I can just drain it all into this. So let's see if this works. Make sure that's in. And here we go. Ah, noise. Working good. Might be the first oil change I've done without making a mess. All right, so it's, it's slowed to a drip now. I'm gonna wipe the threads, take my plug back in, and then I'm just gonna tighten it up. I'm not gonna get a torque wrench or anything like that. I'm just gonna get it snug. Not too bad, just a few drops. All right, so next I'm gonna add the synthetic blend air compressor oil I picked up. Just gonna add it slowly while watching the filler glass on the side because I don't have the instructions that tells me how much oil this thing needs. So I'm just gonna fill it and keep an eye on it as it goes up. You can see it's slowly going up. I can't stress pour really slow because you'll get air bubbles and it's gonna spit up all over the place. So just add your oil slowly. Okay, so that's roughly where it was when I drained it. And that's where I'm gonna put it when I fill it. And we'll just put the cap back on. And that's the oil change done. I'll give me a minute to clean up the spilt oil and we'll move on to the next thing and check. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna inspect the belt. So we're gonna remove this cover and uh, get access to it and see what it looks like. Okay, so now that we have the cover off, 
You're gonna inspect the belt the same way we would expect the belt on your car. You're looking for the same things. So you've probably listened to it while it's running. If you heard any squealing, that's a red flag. Uh, if you see it slipping, you can run it for a bit. Maybe you'll see it slipping. I've done that. It's not slipping. The last thing we're gonna measure is just uh, how much tension and plays in the belt. So generally, you want on the longest stretch that's unsupported, you measure it. And everything I've read has said that the appropriate tension on the belt should be about a half inch. So I just got my measuring tape. I'm put it right about where, uh, put it on the belt here. And I'm just gonna push it down and see how much it moves. And you can see, I don't know if it comes up clear there, but I'm getting roughly a half inch. Pushing it harder and it's not really going any further. So the tension on this belt should be good. I've looked at it, I don't see any frays, it's not damaged in any way, any gouges really. Everything looks nice and smooth, it looks good. So I'm content that the belt is fine. So I'm gonna put it back together. Next thing I'm gonna do is take a look at the air cleaner in this box right here. And well, look at that. It doesn't even have one. So they've been running it without an air cleaner for a while. So I'm really curious what it's gonna look like when I drain the water out of the bottom. So I'm gonna have to make sure I get an air cleaner. Okay, so since this didn't have a filter, uh, I had to go get a new one. And because it's an older compressor, nobody makes it. So what I did was I got a Generac filter and I've cut it to size. And that's what I'm gonna install on this one because the part's been discontinued. So uh, now that it's been cut to size, I'll just put the new filter in. And then install the filter box. Done. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drain the tank and make sure there is no water in it. Let's see how bad this is. And if that's what all that's gonna come out, I bet it's just a little gummed up. Let's see if I can get something in there. Yeah, there we go. Look at that sludge. So all I did was just take a little wire and work it up because sometimes sediment and stuff can get to the bottom and it just kind of block that drain valve. So we're gonna let that drain for a bit. And when that's done draining, we'll move on to the next thing. Another thing we wanna do is just make sure your pressure relief valve here is uh, working and it's not sticking. And it should be rated to slightly below your maximum allowable working pressure. So. On this tank, the max PSI is 125, but the maximum allowable is 165. It's kind of like a safety rating. And you just want to make sure that when you pull this here, it's not sticky, it just moves easily. So that looks like it's all good. And on the front of that, there's going to be a rating on it. So this one, it says 140. So if this tank ever, for whatever reason, doesn't shut off and keeps filling at 140 PSI, it's going to start bleeding off that excess pressure. Okay, so done all the maintenance. We've drained the fluids, changed the oil, put an air filter in it because I didn't have one. I've checked the belt, drained the water in the tank. I checked the, uh, the pressure valve, make sure that was good. And that's about it. Uh, we're gonna run it now. I'm gonna let it build up to its max PSI, which is about 125 PSI for the tank and see how it goes. All right, guys, there you have it. That's my video on uh, air compressor maintenance. I'm not an expert by no means though. So if you have anything you want to contribute to this video, leave it in the comment section below. If you have any other things you do to maintain your compressors that I didn't do, I would love to hear it. Um, remember when you're done using them, they always recommend that you drain them. You don't want to leave the hot air in there because like when you compress the air, it brings the moisture in, it condense, you get condensation in the tank. And obviously you saw how much water came out of this one and it hasn't been drained for a while. So the recommendation by just about every compressor I read was to drain it at the end of your use. So after this video, I'm gonna release the air. I'm gonna pop the drain valve on the bottom, let whatever little bit of moisture that's still in there drain out. And that's gonna be the end of that. 
Um, going to be getting on the car soon. We've got to get it up on the jig. So that's something if you're following the Charger build. Uh, get ready. There'll be a couple more videos dropping soon on that. And that's about it, I think. So if you guys got any questions, as always, leave it below. Like, subscribe, and see you at the next one. Take it easy.